Hey guys, this is Nick from Honest Nick Reviews. Today I will be reviewing the brand new Huawei P9 Plus 64 gig version with four gigs of RAM. You can see it over here, it's quite a nice slim phone. We're gonna start with a nice boot up speed while I talk to you through some of the specs. So, I have my Moto 360 smartwatch over here where I'm going to do the time on. Okay, and I'm going to turn this on. It's one, two, three. Okay, let's see what happens here with the boot up time. I did boot it up a little bit, maybe two seconds after that. So let's see what happens. Uh, but for the time being, you can see the phone over here. Uh, boot up time wise, the iPhone 6S Plus does it in 14 seconds and 10 split seconds. This is still going 29 seconds, 30 seconds. There we go, 31 seconds. So that is the 31 seconds. Let me start this up over here. So the iPhone 6S Plus boot up time does it in 14 seconds and 10 split seconds. The S7 Edge does it in 20 seconds and 18 split seconds. And the P9 Plus, according to the internet, does it in 22 seconds and 22 split seconds. Um, so yeah, let's get this going over here. First startup, I need to do that. There is the beautiful, gorgeous phone over here. Let me lock it there so I can talk about a few of the things. So this launched in May 2016 alongside the standard P9 and then the budget P9 Lite. Um, this is the quartz gray model, my color version over here with the nice black front and that grayish look similar to iPhone 6's space gray. You can see the other colors over here. You've got the gold and the white. These three are the plus. These are the normal P9. You can also get them in the P9 lights like the pink if you're into that stuff. The normal P9 and P9 lights have like a just a matte finish. The P9 lights more of like a plasticky finish. If you look over here, <clears throat> the P9 Plus has like a metallic finish. There's like a few little lines. It's got like a nice little look, obviously, with the bar at the top here for the new Leica dual lenses over there. On the front, we have the front camera over there. Then we have the phone speaker there, which is, after experiencing some music, um, is actually a normal speaker. So similar to HTC's boom sound, where it has a speaker here, yes, HTC is a bit bigger, uh, and then this kind of works as a subwoofer over here. This doesn't work as a subwoofer like the HTC. This works as a normal speaker, and this also a normal speaker. So it does kind of have that stereo effect, which is pretty cool. The bottom, you have the earphone jack, which I like. Um, Huawei's last huge phone, well, not the Mate 8, but the Nexus 6P had it at the top over here. I wasn't too fond of that. Um, at the bottom there, you can see the USB port type C, which is actually USB 3.1 charger port, which came standard with the box, which is your invertible port like that, where you can flip it around and it charges very fast. Obviously not just through the cable, but mainly through Huawei's quick charge, which is just as fast, if not faster than the S7 Edge um, iPhone not having the quick charge over there. Uh, so another cool thing, when I opened up the box, I got this nice little slim cover. If you look on the side, if you can see it, it actually says Huawei over there, which is quite nice. It doesn't make the phone too big when you put it on, so that's cool. This is free with the phone. Uh, did not expect that at all, but for the purpose of this video, let me pop this back out of the cover. So it has a full metal unibody design. The back doesn't feel like metal, but it doesn't feel like as plasticky as the LG G5. The G5 says that it is full metal, but it really does feel like plastic, but it just has like a paint layer over it. This also has a paint layer over, but it feels a lot more premium, a lot more metal-like. Um, and the reason for the paint layer is so that it doesn't slip out your hand like you get with HTC devices. Um, so other than that, we have the, um, wake button over here the lock button actually has a little red thing around there i'm not too sure if i'm too fond of that but it is grazed a bit over there so you can feel it nicely uh there's your volume rocker up and down feels nice and steady uh unlike the g5 which i wasn't too fond of but not like the iphone and the samsung where they're two separate which is what i prefer the most then you have your tray over there for your 
nano sim and also a micro sd card slot similar to the s7 htc but not like the nexus 6p and the iphone this phone only comes in 64 gigs of storage um, so it is pretty spacey i've thrown in another 64 gig over here which is quite cool at the top over here you'll see an infrared blaster which is really cool i've tried it with my tv and home setup and it works just as well as any other ir blaster out there in the world today um, at the back here, you have the, the dual lens setup, like I told you, with a nice black bar. Unlike the Nexus 6P, there's no bulge. So when you put it on the surface, it is very flat. There's no like lifting effect there, like the 6P. Um, on the back, you'll also see there's the antenna line. It's hidden over here by the camera, which is quite nice, but it actually kind of looks, it doesn't look too bad. Not like iPhone antenna lines. It's quite a nice antenna line over there. Then you have your touch sensor over there for your fingerprint reader which is quite cool um so yeah other than that talking about curves everyone likes the curves on the screens and stuff when you run your finger down the side over here it will fall off the edge it's not like the 6p where it will stick to it and it feels like it's edging there so it's actually nice and smooth on your hand back has the same effect a little bit of a rounded effect they haven't gone to crazy extents like the samsung galaxy s7 and s7 edge with those rounded curves which say it feels better but this actually feels really nice it doesn't feel like it hurting my hands like a Sony Xperia Z5 for example so yeah that is it for the physical body so after physical body we go straight into the fingerprint sensor because that's what gets us into the phone you do have your password or your little unlock key like that on other phones but I prefer just a normal password or your fingerprint sensor the cool thing about the sensor is you can tap it like that from the screen being completely off and it will unlock quite quick, I must add. I don't know what it's opening there. Um, I think it is updates for apps. So there we go. You can see I'm not touching there as soon as I... Very quick, a lot quicker than the 6P. This is the apparent fingerprint sensor 4 Huawei has made. They had this fingerprint sensor 3 in the Nexus 6P and the Mate 8. Uh, this apparently gets the depth of your finger as well. Um, so if I hold my finger upside down, it's not just reading the fingerprint, but also the depth. I can use it with my left finger as well. I can use it on the side there and it will unlock no matter where you have your finger, which is really cool due to the grooves in your fingerprint. So that is it for the awesome fast fingerprint sensor on this phone. Software wise, this phone is running Android Marshmallow 6.0.1, which is the latest. Um, it's bloatware you can call it or its interface is known as emui 4.1 uh, this obviously compares directly with the likes of samsung's touch ui and iphone's ios uh, this is not stock android like the nexus is or very close the htc 10 but i can honestly say this is very close when i started it up there was no duplicate apps um, it was a lot less a lot less bloatware than the s7 and s7 edge uh, and it is just better integrated i mean the one thing you can say it's similar to the iphone is there's no app draw similar to lg tried to throw out but everyone complained no one complains with this because they know that the main market for these huawei devices especially now is for people moving from the iphone to an android for a great experience talking more about the software along the lines of iphone you also have this little up draw over there which gives you quick options like the flashlight and your calculator and your camera skip your songs delete things and change your covers and go straight to settings um, other than that software wise i have the magazine lock so every time you unlock and lock your phone it shows a new photo these are actually really cool because they update over wi-fi and you're always getting new awesome photos which just look amazing other than that you have your nice little clock at the bottom with your date your steps counts and your signature in the front showing your notifications there the thing that i do not like about this is when it does show you your notifications over here you can't drag them down to see what they're about you also can't drag down your notification panel on your lock screen but the reason for that is because when you pick up your phone huawei wants you to use your fingerprint sensor straight away and go into the phone another cool thing with the software with your um notifications panel over here if you pull it down on the left it will bring up your notifications you pull it down on your right it will pull up your shortcuts you can change that to make it the most recent first and if there's no notifications it'll go automatically to your shortcuts best thing about this 
is this little fingerprint sensor over here. For the first time ever, you can actually use it to navigate your phone. So if you use the sensor to pull down, it will then pull down your notifications panel and you can push it up to go back up. Once it's down, you can double tap and it will clear your apps, which is great. So obviously pulling down like that and pushing back up. Another cool thing with that is when you go to your gallery on your photos, you can use it to go to the side. So when I do that, it will go to the next photo. You can see these great photos on here. There is some of the restaurant food I had the other day and me and my fiance. So that is a great selfie photo over there. Take some really good photos. Yes, I'm in love. Sorry for that. There's my food. So yeah, it's taking some good photos. Nice to flip around over here. Awesome thing about this phone, especially the P9 Plus compared to the normal P9. The normal P9 doesn't have 3D touch and this does. It is the only phone other than the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus that has it. So when I push down hard enough on the screen, I can then start zooming in. The less pressure I put on the screen, the more it will zoom out. And the more pressure I put on the screen, the more it will zoom in, which is great for you photo lovers to quickly zoom, pan in, pan out, and maybe even edit that screen. More awesome things with the software is your knuckle. It might not always work for the likes of this video. I hope it works first time, but let's see how it goes. Tap, double tap over there, takes a screenshot, saves it to your gallery. You can click quickly hit share there if you want to. Other than that, with the knock, you can knock it like this and you can crop a screenshot. You can also save that, share it, edit it, send it to your gallery. Other than that, um, you have a cool thing by writing. If I write a W, it'll take me to WhatsApp. If I write camera, it will take me to camera. Well, C for camera, E for internet, and my optimization setting is M. Oh. M for music so it works pretty much every time which is great you don't have to knock it too much and you can change the sensitivity of that um, so other than that with the software the 3d touch also enables you like the iPhone to hold in and it will then bring up other options like that you can change it to start settings over here start settings meaning that when you hold it and you push it even further it will automatically go to your start setting it'll open straight up to that if you want to see the change you can click selfie and when I hold it in like that it will automatically open selfie which is perfect so that kind of wraps it up on this department but I just want to mention obviously there is a play store there's no app drawer um, you can carry on rotating not like the iPhone and the Samsung uh, you can also customize how your layout moves side to side which you can get third-party apps for which is cool. There is no always on display like the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge and LG G5, but you can download third party apps for it, but it does drain the shit out of your battery. So that kind of wraps it up on the software department. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. I personally think that it gives you the best experience for Android and iOS lovers. It wraps them both up beautifully and gives you this awesome software layout of your design. Okay, so now when we get down to the crunching numbers, the hardware specs of the phone. The Huawei P9 Plus screen is a 5.5 inch AMOLED panel, by the way, with 401 PPI pixels per inch due to the standard 1080p HD screen, very similar to the iPhone 6S Plus. Actually so similar in fact that the 6S Plus screen is also 5.5 inches and also 401 pixels per inch due to it being 1080p, obviously. Uh, same size screen, same resolution, um, same PPI. But the iPhone is an IPS display, very similar to the P9 and the P9 Lite, which actually also have an IPS LCD screen, but because they're smaller at 5.2 inches, they have 423 PPI density and also at standard HD. Um, where this gets knocked out of the park is with the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, which is also a 5.5 inch AMOLED panel, but it has 534 PPI due to its Quad HD 2 like feel screen, 2K like feel screen. Um, so that is quite overpowering, but I must say I have used the standard S7 and that actually has an even better um, 
PPI compared to the S7 Edge and I must say this Huawei screen looks beautiful. They get their colors nice and vibrant because of the AMOLED. You don't need more than HD on a screen. You really don't. It looks it looks so great. Everything on this phone is just perfect. The colors pop. The camera photos are gorgeous, but they still keep them nice. Nice colors still looking great and clear. Um, so yeah, then when you move on to the daylight on the screen when you're standing outside, I have found no issues. Might not be as good as like an HTC 10 or Nexus 6P, but you can see everything perfectly clear with full brightness, which is fine. Um, so yes, this, like I said, this has 64 gigs of RAM. I mean, 64 gigs of storage in with four gigs of RAM. That's the only model that this gets, but because of your micro SD card slot option, you can up that to up to 200 gigs of storage, which is great. Comparing this to the 6S Plus and the Samsung Galaxy S7, the S7 Edge also has an uh, option for your micro SD, also with 4 gigs of RAM, and you can get 32 gigs, 64 gigs, or 128 gigs of storage. The iPhone also has 32 gigs, 64 gigs, and 128 gigs of storage, but there's no option for an SD card slot. Um, talking more about the body, the S7 Edge and the S7 have a waterproof body design where this is not waterproof, but I don't normally throw my phones in the pool, so I'm good on that department. Uh, so other than the RAM, the chipset in this baby is the new Kirin 955, which is actually made by Huawei. Their last one of this was found in the Mate 8, which is a Kirin 950. Um, so comparing this to Samsung's Exynos 8890, which is what you would compare it to, not the strap Snapdragon 810, which you find in the um, United States versions because I'm in South Africa, compare it directly with the Exynos model and the 6S Plus has Apple's A9 chip in, which is just as fast. Um, so when you talk about the processing speed, you talk about the CPU. The CPU in this, it has a quad-core 2.5 gigahertz Cortex-A72 and a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz Cortex-A53. The S7 has a quad-core 2.3 gigahertz and 1.6 gigahertz, so this is a little bit faster, especially compared to iPhone's dual-core 1.84 gigahertz twister, but with that twister in the iPhone, it is optimized great, and I do find it runs a lot faster than any other phone in the market, but geez, this phone really does come close. Other than that, we have the GPU for all you gaming lovers. That is your graphics. Um, so the graphics on here is a Mali T88 880 MP4. The S7 has a Mali T880 MP12, which is slightly better, but not by much. Don't let those numbers fool you. And that is obviously on the Exynos version. Um, the 6S Plus has a Power VR GTX 606 core graphics, which is also quite great. But I find the colors do pop and look a lot better with gaming on the AMOLED panels and especially on the GPUs of the likes of Huawei and Samsung. So that is it for the raw hardware specs of this gorgeous phone. So now let's get more into the things that this phone can do, such as apps and games. Um, so let me show you a few of the apps that come pre-installed with this device. The music player is quite nice, very nice and basic looking. Uh, you can hit your local songs and then it's pretty similar to iPhone where you have your artists and stuff like that. Nothing at the bottom like iPhone. I find it works quite well. Um, other than that, you have your gallery, which works quite well. It's kind of places everything in order it tells you your location tells you the date that it was done on then you have your albums all your different specific albums like every other android phone then your videos also quite similar to the loadout of the pictures um, then google chrome opens quite quick you can go into new tabs very quickly internet is no issue there what i like to show on google chrome is the whites um so just to show you oh this is not all the way up there we go my brightness is now all the way up um, so check how white those whites are if i open up here that is extremely white perfect white colors courtesy of the amoled panel which is great going into some games let me clear this up let's go into temple run 2 see how quick that opens up Hopefully it will open up quite quickly. Loading, loading, loading. And it should be in. That was very quick for me. Let me show you some of the media volume. 
so you can hear you can hear it's coming out the top here which is great it looks perfect i mean it really doesn't look much different to at any different panel so uh well obviously it looks better than an ips lcd panel but it looks just as great if not better than the samsung panel uh let's go into angry birds 2 these little guys over here if you've watched the movie it made you excited to play the game <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm not like that or am i uh, another thing these integrated buttons over here you can actually customize so that you can bring down the notification panel by just tapping it so you can put four over here or you can change the back the other way around similar to samsung's on screen buttons um, but it's obviously integrated so the screen size is a little bit smaller but it does fade away with games and apps uh, this is actually taking quite a while it didn't take this long earlier it might be because temple runs running in the background i hope that's not the case though the four gigs of ram should give it more than enough room to open up apps great uh, there we go so let's go to one we have played So, good sound effects, great quality, perfect for gaming, you're not going to go wrong there. The GPU that Huawei have put in here is great. Um, I just want to show you guys some of the speakers, speaker quality over here. Let's see. Uh, monster. So, drop that down to notifications. Open that up there. I think the sound quality is quite great. It's a tiny bit coming through there, not too much. I think it's mainly for when you muffle it, you still hear some quality there. Oh, that's cool. I didn't see that before. Pause that. We hit that over there. Shows us what we're into. This is kind of similar to the old Sony Ericsson's, which is quite cool. You can flick through some songs. Wow, this is this is really nice. It's the first time I've seen this. That was just by accident. <laughs> but that's quite cool. So that kind of wraps it up for the apps and games, guys. So now let's get to the most exciting thing about this phone, which is that. These puppies which are over here. These two camera lenses, they are both 12 megapixel camera lenses in total 24, but you can't say it's a 24 megapixel camera considering that one of them is monochrome, meaning just black and white. The other one is just color, which is also great. Um, this camera is brilliant. These dual lenses, these dual flash over here is just as good as any other dual flash and underneath that buried, which you can't even see, is the laser autofocus function which is great this has an aperture of 2.2 which is great it has nice wide angled lenses so that it can capture lots of color similar to what they rave about on the a7 and the a7 edge um, the front camera over here is an 8 megapixel shooter also has a very nice laser autofocus to it you can see how shiny the screen is there it looks quite nice um, other than that, you have your volume rocker over here, your bottom volume rocker. You double tap that and it'll quick go to camera. Um, whatever you were in last, it will then pick up on. Uh, so camera wise, I think this camera is brilliant. I have a light on over here, so let's see how much noise it gets. Barely any noise from the light there. Moving on to my bag here, it focuses everything quite quick. It really does get that picture right. Let's check this little Angry Bird guy out. Check if we then focus on the color, tap it there. Oh, I'm on recording. That won't help. Let's flick over to camera. Use some of the flash. Show you how great that photo is with a flash. Let me show you without a flash on Mr. Angry Bird over here. No flash is really needed. I have more than enough light in this room. 
there's flash, there's no flash. See what I mean? Nice natural pictures. If you see this guy in light, you will see that he looks very similar to that. The whites on here aren't blurry. That's courtesy to the shit iPhone 6 camera that my fiance is filming me on at the moment. Um, so another cool thing with this is if you tap over there, it gives you the option to use a focus. So if we use our little red Indians guy over here and we focus on him there, we're then gonna focus on him. Just need his head to stop bubbling. Take the photo. Then after you go to the photo, you click this little guy. You move him around wherever you want. Let me move it to his face. Boost that up. Hit save. And now you can see it's kind of, it's blurring everything else in the background and mainly focusing on him, which is a cool, quick feature to tap on over there. Um, other than that, you have quite a nice interface over here. You have your photo, you can take photos just straight in black and white. There's your monochrome. It actually takes really good black and white photos. You can see over there, super clear because that's just dedicated to one lens by itself. You have your beauty face for those of you who have terrible blemishes. You have your video, your HDR, which takes great photos. And I'm glad it didn't include this in the automatic photo setup. It gives you the option to take it with it by itself and it tells you to hold it steady and it gives you the best in dark and light situations. Other than HDR, you have a nice night shot to capture more light when things get dark. Panorama works just as great as anything else. Your light painting is really awesome. If there's a car driving on the road, when you click it, it asks you what you wanna choose. If you choose tail lights, which is like on a car, when it drives past, it will trace those lights, which is an awesome feature. I'm yet to try it, but I have seen it all over the net, which is great. You get your normal time lapse, your slow-mo, watermark, where you can have a nice little um, Leica watermark at the bottom, showing everyone off that you have a Leica camera set up on your phone. Audio note, taking a photo with audio in the background, and a document scan, which is awesome, like a like a PDF scanner, similar to ScanBot, ScanBot and Scannable. If you then, let's go back to normal photo. If we then, this is actually um, going at 16 by nine resolution, which I prefer. So it's only on its nine megapixel. Um, so if we flick it to its 12 megapixel, you can see it's a little bit clearer, but you can't really see much of a difference. Uh, megapixel wise, I do think that it only truly makes a difference when you are looking at it on a huge TV or a projector of some sort. Uh, on my Samsung, there was a lot of noise when I was looking at the screen. Any photo on the screen, any video on the screen, there would be like these lines coming through on the screen, which were terrible. Over here, it is just perfect and crisp. Um, other than that, you have your, let me look at over here. So you have a whole bunch of different modes, which is cool. Uh, another cool thing with the camera option over here if I push here and I go to pro camera for all of you pro enthusiasts, there is, if you move it, you will then see the brightness changing, the ISO changing, the AS, the EV, the autofocus, everything automatically adjusts for you. You can adjust that the way that you want it to go. You can change daylight shots, light shots, pretty much anything you want with the camera. Uh, another thing, let me just show you the selfie real quick. It takes a great selfie photo. I've taken beauty off because I think I look great enough without it. Thumbs up guys, take a photo, laser autofocus. Nice quick photo over there. There we go. You can also just tap your volume rocker. It'll set a timer and it will take the photo like that, which is great. So that about does it for the camera for this gorgeous, amazing camera headlining cell phone. So now just to briefly touch on benchmarks, um, on Phone Arena, they speak about the benchmarks of these phones. Um, the P9 Plus has a benchmark rating of 97434, which is 97,434. Um, on Untutu, which is over here, I can show you now. Um, also on Phone Arena, there it is over there. Uh, on Phone Arena, you also have the iPhone 6S Plus showing a benchmark of 58,664, which is 
almost half of what the P9 Plus is, but on other sites, I have seen it be a bit higher. You can never really know with these benchmark tests. The Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge has a whopping 128,191, which blows pretty much everything out the, out the park, except for these brand new upcoming Chinese, Japanese, Asian phones that are coming out that no one really knows about, and you have to special order them. Um, but honestly, using this phone is just, been a pleasure this phone has been amazing and you cannot talk about benchmarks it is a lot better than all other benchmarks out there well most benchmarks out there but benchmarks aside when i had the s7 i find this to be quicker when i had the lg i find this to be quicker i think what it's doing is it's using the big specs found in these huge devices and then also using the great optimization techniques that iPhone uses in their devices. I mean, iPhone has two gigs of RAM in the new 6S and 6S Plus, but it is the fastest phone ever, and this comes so close to it, it is great. It has your normal LED lights, it has your SD card in the back, it is the thinnest phone on the market at the moment with seven millimeters thick compared to the iPhone second up, which is, uh, 7.3 millimeters thick and the S7 Edge which is 7.7 .7 millimeters thick. Yes, you might not notice much of a difference, but this phone is a stunner. It is beautiful in every way. It has an infrared blaster, it has no kink on the camera, it has dual lenses. It is one sexy phone, great branding, great fingerprint sensor, great software, great look, great phone. Thanks for watching my video guys. Let me know if you liked it in the comments below. Tell me what you think about the P9 Plus and how you feel it changes from time to time and how it is better or worse from all the other huge phablets which I actually failed to mention. The reason why I was speaking about the 6S Plus and the iPhone I mean, and the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge is because they both have 5.5 inch screens, which is borderline phablet phone. And this is the smallest phablet phone I have held. The S7 Edge is also quite small, but this has the best screen to body ratio. Its bezels are tiny. It feels like I'm holding a five inch screen phone and it is great. Guys, I really hope that you get to try this phone. Hopefully just grab it. Next time you see it, feel it for yourself. Tell me what you think. I love you guys out there for liking my videos, giving me views, and writing some comments for me. Keep it up, guys, and I'll keep my part up too. Cheers, guys.